Hello everybody. Uh, today we're going to talk about animal reproduction, specifically mammals, basically human beings. Uh, this animation is an excellent video that actually shows you how the uh, female menstrual cycle is regulated hormonally and physiologically. Uh, this website called uh, the Life Wire. If you go to the LifeWire.com and you pick chapter 42, right on the left hand side right here, you'll be able to access animated tutorials and you have to pick animal reproduction. So first of all, uh, let's go a little bit over uh, the ovary and the uterine cycle. And uh, it's already narrated. If you go to animations, the ovary and the uterine cycles actually uh, uh, explained here in greater detail. So let's go ahead and click on the events of how the ovarian and the uterine cycle of course. At sexual maturity, each of a woman's ovaries contains about 200,000 immature eggs called primary oocytes. A primary oocyte is diploid and is arrested in prophase 1 of meiosis. A layer of follicle cells surrounds each primary oocyte. Together, an oocyte and its follicle cells make up a follicle. An ovarian cycle lasts about 28 days, beginning at the first day of menstruation, or menses. During the first seven days of the cycle, six to twelve primary oocytes begin to mature. As the follicles develop, the follicle cells communicate with oocytes and pass them nutrients through pores called gap junctions. Each oocyte grows larger and the surrounding follicle cells divide, proliferating to produce thousands of follicle cells in a single follicle. By day seven, all but one of the developing follicles begins to degenerate. The remaining follicle continues to develop and its follicle cells continue to pump it with nourishment and also supply it with proteins and informational molecules needed for early stages of development. The maturing primary oocyte completes meiosis I and divides into two haploid cells. Each of these cells receives half the chromosomes. However, one cell, called a polar body, receives very little cytoplasm. The other, now a secondary oocyte, enters meiosis II and arrests there until fertilization. At day 14, ovulation occurs and the secondary oocyte erupts from the ovary. The oviduct contains microscopic cilia that beat and draw in the released oocytes. This immature egg enters an oviduct where it may become fertilized by a sperm cell and complete meiosis. The follicle cells that are left behind develop into a small mass of endocrine tissue called the corpus luteum. The corpus luteum remains in the ovary for two weeks, secreting the hormones estrogen and progesterone. At the end of the ovarian cycle, if the woman is not pregnant, the corpus luteum disintegrates. Each month, the ovarian cycle is tightly coordinated with the uterine cycle. In the uterine cycle, the lining of the uterus builds up, forming elongated glands, and then sloughs off. The cycle begins with the sloughing of the uterine lining. This is the first day of menses, also called menstruation. After menstruation, the uterine lining starts to grow again and to prepare for implantation of an embryo. During this phase of the uterine cycle, up until ovulation, the uterine lining proliferates and the glands that make up the uterine lining elongate. Capillary beds grow into the glands to supply this tissue with nutrients. Just before menstruation occurs again, the capillary beds degenerate and no longer deliver the surrounding glandular tissue with nutrients. During menstruation, this tissue dies and sloughs off through the vagina to the outside of the body. Now we've seen how the normal female actually has normal menstruation every 28 days. However, we need to understand how hormonal balances in the body regulated by the hypothalamic pituitary axis actually regulates this. So now let's go ahead and click on animation again. Now we can see how the hormones, which is estrogen and progesterone, actually regulates this cycle. The ovarian and uterine cycles are controlled by an interplay of hormones. Select an option. So we're going to select the first option, starting from the pituitary gland and how the hormones regulate the uh, ovary in terms of how the menstrual cycle actually occurs. 
The ovarian cycle is controlled by the interplay of hormones from the pituitary gland and from the ovary itself. A few days before the beginning of the cycle, the anterior pituitary begins to increase its secretion of two hormones, follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone, LH. FSH and LH stimulate ovarian follicles to grow. As the follicles grow, they begin to secrete estrogen. During this phase of the cycle, the increasing levels of estrogen feed back on the pituitary to inhibit the release of additional FSH and LH. During the next week, the levels of FSH and LH drop. Beginning around day 12, the increasing levels of estrogen suddenly have the opposite effect on the pituitary gland. Instead of exerting a negative feedback on the pituitary, these hormones now exert a positive feedback, stimulating the pituitary to release FSH and large amounts of LH. LH reaches a peak at day 14 of the ovarian cycle. This LH surge triggers the mature follicle to rupture and release the egg, the process of ovulation. LH then triggers the remaining follicle cells to differentiate into the corpus luteum, which secretes estrogen and progesterone. The corpus luteum remains in the ovary, secreting estrogen and progesterone for the last two weeks of the cycle. At this point in the cycle, these hormones again inhibit the release of FSH and LH. A decline in FSH and LH restricts follicles from beginning to develop during the second half of the cycle. LH, or a hormone produced by an implanted embryo, is required to maintain the life of the corpus luteum. At the end of the cycle, if an embryo is not implanted, the corpus luteum degenerates. When the corpus luteum degenerates, it no longer releases estrogen and progesterone. So that was an excellent explanation of how the ovarian cycle is regulated by FSH and LH, as you guys have seen. Uh, you've seen how estrogen has its effects on the uh, endometrium and how progesterone also arises after day 15 as the graph is showing over here. Uh, let's go ahead and actually uh, watch. The ovarian and uterine cycles are controlled by an interplay of hormones. Select an option. So we're going to see how the ovarian cycle is actually regulated now by the effects of estrogen and uh, progesterone. The ovarian and uterine cycles are tightly coordinated. Hormones secreted by the ovary at different phases of the ovarian cycle trigger changes in the uterine lining. For example, at the beginning of the cycles, the levels of estrogen and progesterone are too low to maintain the uterine lining, and menses begins. About a week into the ovarian cycle, the developing follicle increases its secretion of estrogen, and estrogen levels in the body begin to rise. This hormone triggers the cells of the uterine lining to proliferate, and the lining becomes thicker. Just before ovulation, the level of estrogen in the body has reached its peak. Afterward, the follicle cells remaining in the ovary develop into the corpus luteum, a structure that releases estrogen and progesterone. The hormones maintain the uterine lining at a peak thickness and preparedness for embryo implantation. At the end of the cycle, if the egg is not fertilized or has not implanted, the corpus luteum breaks down and stops releasing estrogen and progesterone. Without these hormones, the uterine lining also breaks down, initiating menses. So that was the end of the video. I hope this was very helpful. Uh, this is like a small chart to actually see how the hypothalamus produces the GnRH hormone, which actually acts on the pituitary which then allows the pituitary to release its LH and the FSH, which acts on the ovary to make estrogen and progesterone, which has its end result on the effect on the uterus. As you can see, that's how the uterus is stimulated, and there's always a negative feedback when there's a lot of estrogen or progesterone feeding back either to the anterior pituitary or to the hypothalamus. Uh, overall, I hope this video was very helpful. Uh, if you like this video, click on like. If you would like to visit more tutorial videos, uh, go to thelifewire.com and also visit our website www.ftpinc.org. That is our personal website. Uh, it's called Future Teaching Physicians. Thank you very much for your time. Have a nice one. Bye-bye.